iron deficiency. When we compare to the US nations, where it is only four to five percent. So when we categorize them into the pregnant level, the incidence is accounting for 50 percent. So we are this iron deficiency anemia, it's a treatable cause, but in spite of it, we are facing even now more and more of iron deficiency cases, which is easily treatable. So our government has also taken some schemes in Asia, and I'll explain about the, the, what are the schemes and the programs the government has initiated to eradicate this iron deficiency anemia, or at least decrease the prevalence. And so why does iron deficiency anemia occur and is still prevalent in our setup in Indian scenario? It's all mainly because of the nutritional deficiencies. So women are more prone for iron deficiency because of her menstruation and also because of the pregnancy. So it's a good topic. Right. So we are looking forward for this particular topic for discussion today. So I would like to really request my attendees here. If you have any doubts or you want to ask something particular to Dr. Aruna Reddy, please write it on the chat box. We'll be taking the question at the end of the session. Or if Dr. Aruna, you would like to take in between question, we can do that as well. Uh, we'll take in the end, end of the session. Perfect. So we'll start with the session, doctor. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. Let me start. So it's the most common disorder that is affecting 55% of the Indian women. As I told you, the percentage in the US is very less compared to ours. So what is anemia? According to WHO, it is defined as anemia in pregnancy, per se we are talking. So we're not considering the whole spectrum of the women. The, we'll stick our topic only to the pregnancy and to iron deficiency. There are other uh, anemic states also. So we'll particularly talk only about iron deficiency here. So WHO, according to WHO, if the hemoglobin level is less than 11 grams and hematocrit less than 35, we call them as iron deficiency anemia. But according to the ICMR, it's only when the circulatory levels of hemoglobin are qualitatively and qualitatively less than normal, they define it as a anemia. And in this, we have the classification that is a mild, moderate, severe, and very severe. Mild is when the hemoglobin, this is according to the hemoglobin concentration we are talking about. So mild is when it is 10 to 10.9. Moderate is 7 to 9.9. .9. And severe is when it is less than 7. And very severe when it is more than less than 6. So coming to the pathogenesis or etiology. Why is it occurring so common in Indian women? Because as I told you, it's mainly because of the nutritional deficiency and malabsorption syndromes and uh, uh, food fats people not able to take the iron rich diet. So this is a main problem, which leads to chronic anemia. And associated with this, there will be some menstrual disorders which are not addressed by the woman. So this all leads to the anemic status. So in pregnancy, we'll talk why this occurs. There will be a, a gross increase in the blood volume that is about 40% above the pre-pregnant level. Both the plasma and the RBIC, both are increased during the pregnancy. This will cause to dilutional and uh, hemoglobin. Hemoglobin levels will be decreased, but there will be no change in the mean corpuscular volume or MCSE, that is mean corpuscular hemoglobin concentration. So the iron requirement is definitely increased to meet with this challenges of increased plasma and RBC mass, the iron requirement has to be increased. That is around 1000 milligrams. So additional requirement of four to six milligrams per day during the pregnancy is required. That is four milligram, 14 milligrams of iron at an average absorption. The absorption rate is also less. That is five to 10 percent is required. There is also other factors which are required for producing the hemoglobin, that is folic acid, which is also increased, that is 400 to 800 milligrams micrograms per day. Vitamin B12 is increased three times, and pyridoxin and trace elements are also increased. So there are, as I said, there will be other causes of anemia. We cannot particularly look one anemic state as 
iron deficiency. We have to rule out the other causes of anemia. So like any acute blood loss or any chronic blood loss due to the parasitic infections, hookworm infestations, cystosomiasis, trichuriasis, or it can be because of repeated abortions, APH, PPH, and some genetic factors like thalassemia, sickle cell trait, G6PD deficiency, or aplastic anemia. All these leads to anemia. This I will skip. So once the patient comes to OP with any mild, moderate, or severe anemia, how are you going to assess? What are the symptoms they will present with? So as we know, there are two types of anemia. It could be an acquired one or it can be inherited. Whatever the cause is, there will be some symptoms. In mild cases, patient can be a very asymptomatic or they may present with just uh, paler or pedal edema. While we come to moderate type, there will definitely be some amount of paler pedal edema. In cases of severe cases, we'll find paler pedal edema, there will be facial puffiness, even the abdominal wall edema. They may present with the OP, in the OPD with the breathlessness and tachyapnea, tachycardia, glossitis or stomatitis. So when we come to the acquired forms, what are the acquired forms? So this is mainly because of the nutritional deficiency, that is iron deficiency, folic acid deficiency, vitamin B12 deficiency, or a mixture of all this. We have a plate, palate of everything, but in spite of that, we land up with deficiency because of our food practices. So that's the reason where a deficiency, because of a nutritional deficiency, the anemia results. Then there is a condition like a hemorrhage. They may be acute forms or a chronic forms like a bleeding piles or menorrhagia or anything. And there is hemolytic forms. And in case of PIH also, there will be some amount of anemia. Other causes will be like a plastic anemia or any infections or infestations by hookworm, trichuriasis, cystosomiasis. The inherited forms of anemia are mainly because of hemoglobinopathies. What are the hemoglobinopathies? Thalassemia, sickle cell anemia, and others. Then, then there are membrane defects, that is RBC membrane defects, spherocytosis, enzyme defects, elliptocytosis, and other enzyme defects like uh, G6PD deficiency, pyruvate kinase deficiency. All these are causes for anemia. Then how do you work up this pregnant woman? How do you elicit a history? How do you take look out for the signs and symptoms of the disease? So first of all, you have to think what is a probable cause? Then accordingly, you have to elicit the history, try to take out the history. Suppose the probable cause you have thinking like any infection, infections which causes deficiency and lead to anemia are like malaria, urinary tract infections, and even the tuberculosis. In these patients, we should be very specific about history. We have to ask whether there was a history of a recurrent fever with chills and rigors, whether there are any urinary complaints, burning maturation, frequency of maturation, or anything. In case you are suspecting tuberculosis, you should ask for cough, fever, low-grade fever, cough with expectoration, or blood stains. In case of chronic loss of blood, you have to ask for any bleeding gums, which is common sometimes in pregnancy. So that is because of vitamin C deficiency, everything. Or because of any hemoglobinopathies, they also present with bleeding gums. Then there is piles, which is again neglected factor in women, which can bleed during the motion and any hookworm infestation. This is also common in India that is to be treated before treating the iron deficiency anemia. Suppose you are suspecting any malabsorption, then they, you should ask for any bulky stools, any <coughs> chronic diarrhea, or if they are passing motion with the blood stain motions or anything, you should ask. Then if you are suspecting any bleeding or coagulation disorders, what will you look for? We look for a petty K, any easy bruisability or ecumotic patches. Then hemoglobinopathies. You have to ask if the patient had an history of a repeated blood transfusion or blood components 
in the past for self or even in the family because they might have not been investigated for the hemoglobinopathies, but they might be in the family history of repeated blood transfusions. Then we have, will go for the testing for hemoglobinopathies. Then any hemolysis. So this is exhibited as high colored urine, any discoloration of the sclera, or in, when the drug intake also leads to hemolysis. Dietary deficiencies, a detailed dietary history you have to ask whether they are vegetarians, non-vegetarians, the cooking habits, whether they are cooking in the iron vessels or something else, you have to take the history. And also more consumption of phytate or even caffeine with the uh, food is, this also inhibits the absorption of iron. So here you have to take a little bit detailed history of the dietary habits of the woman. Then the menstrual history the cycle length, duration, or excessive bleeding, any clot passage, frequency of uh, menses, uh, all this leads to decrease in the iron content and also the hemoglobin content. So any obstetric history, next comes to obstetric history. Naturally, we have to ask for number of abortions, if she at all she had, and the space gapping between the uh, previous abortion and the next pregnancy and the repeated childbirths. If there is no gap, she will, the resources will be exhausted and she'll not be able to build up totally for the, and she will not be prepared for the next pregnancy. Any pregnancy complications during the previous pregnancy, APH, PPH, and any blood transfusion in the previous. And uh, even now you can ask about the current pregnancy, everything all related to this, any anemic conditions, like APH or everything. Then contraceptive use. Did she use any IUCD? Did it lead to any menorrhagia? All this history, we have to take. The history plays a vital role. Examination also plays vital role. Then comes the biochemical examination. So this is a biochemical test. They only substantiate our history and our diagnosis. Then that leads to the treatment. We can plan accordingly the treatment for this patients. So this, as I said, the investigation that definitely depend upon the severity of anemia, which we have classified as mild, moderate, severe, then the type of anemia, whether it is acquired or it is congenital. And there are also types like microcytic anemia, macrocytic megaloblastic anemia. So when all this is ruled out, you have to go for a bone marrow activity. So this, what will you, once you have taken the symptoms, how, what are the signs and how do you examine the patient? So you have a general physical examination, then systematic examination as a routine for any patient. So you record the vitals, the pulse rate. In anemic conditions, if it is normal, mild or moderate, you will not find much of a difference. But when it goes to the, the moderate to severe type, the pulse volume will be reduced. Tachycardia will be there. Pulse rate will be more. The BP can be low or it can be normal also. The respiratory rate, sometimes there will be tachyapnic, breathlessness. They will be having shortness of breath. So the RR will increase there. And then you have to see for the mucosal areas and observe for any paler. Where do you observe the paler? The conjunctiva. Then color of the palmar creases. So they will be so pale and the palmar creases will be not visible so distinguishedly. Then any petechia or ecchymotic patches on the skin, we have to see. And coming to the eyes, you see for any paler, any itrus. Itrus is because of the increased levels of bilirubin, where it is tells us, it gives a, an idea that it might be because of some sort of hemolysis that is going on, or it might be because of uh, some liver function disorders. Then oral cavity examinate. So there might be any glossitis, stomatitis, heliosis. All these are because of the micronutrient and the various vitamin deficiency associated with iron deficiency. Then you have should look for the nails. I don't think anybody is examining the nails nowadays. You have to see for the paler. Any paranychia, coilonychia, any clubbing. All these have to be examined. And the neck, you see for any lymphadenopathies. Lymphadenopathy occurs in cases of tuberculosis or in any other myelodegenerative disorders. Then you have to see for the JVP, which will be raised in case of congestive heart failure, which is a, a, a severe form. 
thyroid, it's a, a definitive examination point of view. So thyroid enlargement for every patient, we observe the thyroid enlargement that is to be seen. Then going to the legs, edema, pitting edema. Pitting edema will be there. Then any ulcers, any peripheral neuropathies. All this is combined forms of deficiency, not just iron deficiency. Coming to the systematic examination, then systemic examination, you have just steps you can see for any sternal tenderness, any Krebs, basal Krebs, then CVS examination, you do murmur or anything. Then edema of the abdominal wall, hepatosplenomegaly. In chronic cases and severe cases, you find hepatosplenomegaly. Then a presence of free fluid, that means anemia is very severe and the protein deficiency is definite. Then obstetric examination, because it's a pregnant um, uh, mother we are dealing with, you see the height of the uterus to know whether it is corresponding to the gestational age. Usually in anemia, what happens? It might be a small for gestational age baby. So you know uh, the height might be less or <clears throat> you may feel normal. Then the tone of the uterus acting or not acting because the completion of the examination say, then the number of fetuses. In multifetal gestation, again, the iron deficiency anemia, the rate is increased. So you will see that. Then the amount of like or whether it is decreased. Then we, as a routine, we see the fetal heart. 